Hello, life science students. This is your lecture for calcium and soda. Why do our bodies need calcium? And how does soda affect calcium? In class, I gave you a Cornell note. All of these notes go on the right side. We will talk about what goes on the left side later and what goes at the bottom later. So first, start by writing calcium and soda in the topic. And then the first line in the right side notes should say, why do our bodies need calcium and how does soda affect calcium? So first we're going to start with, why do we need calcium? Why do our bodies need calcium? What does it do with it? Well first, our bones use calcium as a cement that glues our bone cells together. This is a picture of a normal bone on the left and a bone that has been stripped of calcium on the right. This person has developed something called osteoporosis. You can see that the bone on the left, the normal bone, is much more filled in. All this area, all filled in. The holes here are much smaller. Over here, we've got big holes big areas where it's missing bone material. This is going to be a much weaker bone. And this is lacking the calcium that makes the cement that holds the bone cells together. Next, teeth use calcium to help build, build strong enamel. The uh, enamel is the extremely hard outer layer of our teeth. So this is a nice healthy smile here with this very strong enamel, um, but what happens if the enamel is worn away? Well, oops, you get this. You can see that the enamel is worn away in all these different places. The, here the teeth are completely worn away, but this stuff is definitely on its way to being history. Also, your muscles, you might not have heard this before. Most people know about the bones and the teeth, but your muscles need just the right amount of calcium to function properly as well. Muscles can cramp or um, even fail if uh, they don't have the right amount of calcium. If you have ever exercised and then when you're done exercising, if you have felt your muscles twitching, um, that is typically due to uh, a calcium imbalance. Also, your nerves need the right amount of calcium to correctly and accurately send electrical impulses. By the way, I'm pausing a little bit in between each of these because I know that if you have to pause the video and then go to play it again, sometimes the sound doesn't come back. And I don't know why that is. I have uh, contacted EduCreations to try to um, resolve that. Um, but if that does happen, if the sound does cut out, um, then you just simply refresh the screen and then um, you can go fast forward to the spot where you need to go to and then the sound should come back. All right, something that you've probably heard but bears um, repeating is that teens, you, need more calcium than kids or adults. Um, I'm going to show you a website at the end that allows you to calculate your calcium needs and to um, make sure that you're getting enough calcium in your diet. So how does soda affect your body, right? So now we know how, why we need calcium. And I've told you in class that sodas um, mess with that calcium balance. So how does it affect soda? Well, um, when I was doing my research, I found out some pretty astonishing things, a lot of different statistics, one of which is that soda consumption has increased 300% over the last 20 years. 
Um, you know, I remember when sodas were just these little six ounce bottles and, you know, people, you know, had them as treats. They treated them like a dessert. Um, and now, you know, a typical serving size is a 20 ounce bottle. Um, that's, that's pretty common or even bigger. So soda is what I call a triple whammy. Um, soda has uh, too much sugar. It contains acid, both in, as an ingredient and then as a byproduct of the carbonation. Uh, and then it also, um, a lot of soda um, has caffeine. Um, there's a few sodas that don't have caffeine, uh, clear sodas, like Sierra Mist or Sprite or 7-Up, uh, and root beer um, does not have caffeine. But pretty much every other soda contains uh, at least some amount of caffeine, typically about um, one-third of the caffeine that a cup of coffee would have. Um, but still, you know, people drink multiple sodas, just like they do multiple cups of coffee, so you're definitely getting um, more than your share of caffeine. So we're going to start talking with, um, with sugar. <clears throat> So here is a 20 ounce bottle of Coca-Cola. Um, you can see that the serving size, which is um, eight fluid ounces here, you've got 27 grams of sugar. That's quite high just in and of itself. But who drinks only, you know, a, a one fifth of this bottle? Um, or, I mean, you know, you've got 2.5 servings in this one bottle. So if you drink the whole thing, then you've got 65 grams of sugar. That's crazy. Here's Mountain Dew. This is just a can. A 12 ounce can has 46 grams of sugar. And another popular one, my favorite, Dr. Pepper. Um, this one is again a, um, a, a 20 ounce bottle. And this one, if you drink the whole thing, which most people would in one sitting, that you've got 66 grams of sugar. That is 22% of your daily intake of sugar. One beverage that you might drink with lunch, for example, um, contains almost one quarter of your total daily allotment of sugar. So, to put it in perspective, because, you know, grams, okay, 66 grams of sugar, what, what does that mean exactly? Well, that means 13 teaspoons of sugar. That's over a quarter cup of sugar. Take a look at this cup, okay? I, I made this cup. I took a picture of this cup. How would you like to sit down and eat that much sugar in one sitting? Ew. I think most of you out there are saying the same thing. Ew. That's, that's just way too much. So sugar, one of the main problems with sugar in sodas is that sugar feeds the bacteria in your mouth that create tooth decay. Uh, so that's how it can affect the things that are in your mouth. Plus just having too much sugar in your body. Um, extra calories um, in your diet that you don't need. Um, it's, uh, it's a processed sugar. Um, your body utilizes natural sugars a lot better. Um, than the uh, proce processed sugar like the high fructose corn syrup that's usually in sodas. Okay, let's talk about carbonic and phosphoric acid because this is really going to get at the heart of the calcium problem. Um, first of all, phosphoric acid is an ingredient in soda. They add it. Look, right there. Phosphoric acid. Okay. Um, if you look at the ingredients here, you don't see very many ingredients. Carbon into water, high fructose corn syrup, caramel color, phosphoric acid, natural flavors, and caffeine. Excellent. So you're drinking basically sugar water. That's what it is. Uh, and with some added acid. Isn't that lovely? So the carbonic acid then is created when you open the soda and the dissolved carbon dioxide that they have shoved in there and put under pressure is that pressure is released, so it's depressurized, which causes these carbon dioxide become, to become undissolved, and that's what creates the bubbles and the carbonation and the carbonic acid. Now, the acid actually strips your body of calcium. It actually removes the calcium that's there, or dissolves the calcium that's there. 
and uh, calcium is a water-soluble mineral, so it just goes out with your urine, uh, and so you, you don't get to utilize it for the things that you need in your body. It can also wear down the teeth enamel and bones, just the acid itself. And it can throw off the calcium balance in your body, which then affects your nerves and your muscles. Now, last topic is caffeine. Our last topic of the three triple whammy is caffeine. So caffeine prevents the absorption of calcium. That means that even if you're getting, oops, sorry. So even if you're getting calcium into your body, the caffeine will prevent it from being absorbed into your body, uh, and it just passes out of your small intestine without ever being utilized for what your body needs it for. So the last topic of these notes is the big picture, okay? So what are you supposed to do with all of this information? Well, first, you need to re recognize that the sodas that you are drinking often are actually replacing the beverages that have calcium. Um, and I found a lot of uh, mixed information about how much effect the caffeine and the carbonic acid actually have on removing um, the calcium from your from your body. Um, a lot of studies actually said that the soda itself, the carbonic acid and the, uh, the both the acids and the caffeine isn't actually the biggest culprit. The biggest culprit is that it's replacing what people would normally drink or eat that has calcium. So you can probably imagine we're talking about milk. You're not drinking as much milk because you're drinking all these sodas. Uh, that's what the studies are showing. So you need to make sure that you limit your intake of soda. I am not saying that soda is evil. Um, I am saying just in moderation. It should be a treat. It should be something you do every once in a while. And make sure that you drink plenty of water and milk. So um, oftentimes it's not feasible to bring milk to school and have it be sitting out of the refrigerator for that period of time. But then what you should do is drink water during that time. And then when you are at home for breakfast, for dinner, make sure that you get plenty of milk. Now there are, of course, other sources of calcium besides milk. Uh, broccoli is a good source. Any kind of leafy greens like uh, bok choy and, and spinach. Um, some nuts are um, high in calcium, or not high in calcium, but a decent source of calcium. Almonds is an example. Cheese, yogurt, of course, because they are dairy products, um, so they're going to be high in calcium. And there are some fish, um, some tuna, salmon, sardines are really a pretty good, good source of calcium for those that like sardines. So if you're curious, um, you would like to know exactly how to make sure that you're getting enough calcium in your diet, um, go to this website, yoplay.com slash calcium calculator. Put in your um, gender, male or female, put in your age, and then it tells you, it's going to tell you you need 1,100 milligrams of calcium. And I encourage you to put in other ages. Just, you know, just play with it. Other ages to see um, what, how much calcium other ages need. And you're going to find that you, a teenager, needs the most calcium of any age group, um, at, at, of any age group. And then it gives you um, some choices of things that you can add to your diet, and it shows you how much calcium it has. And it will tell you, you know, if you're getting the amount of calcium that you need. So, for instance, if you think, oh, let's see, oh, I hate milk, but I you know I love avocados. Um, so you can look and see how many avocados you would need to get 1,100 milligrams. Let me give you a hint: um, there is only 12 milligrams of of um, calcium per avocado, so you're going to have to eat a lot of avocados. Um, uh, something like a glass of milk has 240 some odd um, milligrams of calcium, so that's why milk is oftentimes recommended over others. 
So if you have any questions, of course, um, put them on the left-hand side. Uh, please put at least three questions. Uh, they can be um, sample qu um, quiz questions that might be on a future uh, test or quiz. They can be questions that you have about the notes, things that were just confusing, or they can be questions about things that you're curious about um, that weren't addressed maybe in this uh, lecture. And then uh, we will do the bottom part, the summary part and the reflection part, we will do that in class. And uh, feel free to put comments and ask questions in the EduCreation lesson. Uh, and as a student, feel free to answer. Um, students were very, very knowledgeable and very helpful in the last lesson. I'll see you in class.